to Humana Story. Humana Story was built out of the need for human companionship, a togetherness that only comes from people helping others. We wanted to be able to tell our stories and share our expressions with everyone who needs them. By us telling our stories, we're able to share that moment that forever changed who we are. But the idea is not just to tell our story, but to share the journey in how we overcame that moment in our lives, allowing others to read and see the story and connect to the one sharing. Most people want to tell the horrid things, but fail to share the accomplishments. At Humana Story, we are not those people. We are strong. The winners. We are the achievers. We believe that sharing our experiences will help someone out there in the same situation and allow them to connect with others that have already conquered their struggle. We give the resource within our stories to help those who otherwise would fall. The help to stand up and face what is in front of them without fear or doubt. We believe everyone has the ability to succeed in life. If you are alive on this little rock hurtling through the endless void we call the universe, you are a Humana story. How much of one is up to you? Coffee, 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 hey, coffee, 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 hey. Today is Flat Friday, and if anyone simply questions mark Sargent stumps him i'm going to provide a link to contact us to get that question out so hello human historians how are you it's a beautiful exciting flat friday it's february 12th valentine's day is coming up i mean need i say more coffee 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 oh anyway this is episode number 40 I'm joined by Mr. Magoo, and if you'd like to join the conversation as well, simply log into our current Humana Story thread and give us your best shot. And if they're good, I'll read them on the air. If they're bad, Mr. Magoo will read them on the air. Coffee with Humana Story is the unscripted show whose theme is created by members, for members, and involves Humana Story members from around the world. Now, we also have Mr. Sargent, and we all know Mr. Sargent, but he has one of his devoted cult following <laughs> members wow. and his name is squeaky so say hello squeaky how you doing there buddy how you all doing today i'm doing great love <laughs> okay. to be on the show thank you <laughs> if you can't find the show you're probably using a toaster somewhere in the amazon off grid i stole that from you by the way mark i just want to i know you stole that from me. <laughs> thanks <laughs> i change it every day though no it's, uh, it's all right good. but but more importantly which is much more important the more you weigh the harder you are to kidnap so eat more tomatoes yeah so callers can call into our show at 1-619-798-6307 if you're in the san diego area or just don't care about them long distance charges you can skype us at humana story for a worldwide connection and again when you do just reference cwh40 you can submit your stories to us by going to our website and clicking the submit button that's all you have to do this is a beautiful thing. <laughs> Reading with Humana Story airs at 12.30 on Saturday. Coffee with Humana Story episodes on the re- following Monday will reflect that reading with Humana Story. Don't miss out on our guest speaker interviews, the life in review. Those ones we really like. We don't have any coming up soon. But if we do, we'll let you know. Check the schedule. So the theme of today is Flat Friday. It's number three. And the question of the day. Should Mark Sargent wear an eye patch during interviews? Now, personally, I think so, but... I, yeah, I gotta do be this the pirate one. of the flat earth theory. theory. Pirate of the flat earth. Pir- but, yeah, but you're mixing <laughs> stuff now. Pi- pirate of the flat earth cult? Come on. <laughs> I, I don't know if you can pull that What's off. What's going on here, Blackbeard? Pay attention. Okay. <laughs> Yar. <laughs> okay. So I we're can't just gonna see dive. because I have two glass eyes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? You should, you, should, you should do the next video just like that. <laughs> oh, people get tired of that real quick, I think. Yeah. Okay, so again, I'm going to go ahead and stress it. Today is Flat Friday. Um, if you guys simply thumbs up and give us a like on this video and comment your real questions to us 
at Humana Story. And the way to do that will be in the link below. I'll give it to Mark Sargent to throw up in his little description. And voila. So let's go ahead and get started. So we have questions from last week. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and lead this off real fast by expressing that I wanted to talk about the disruptive animosity. But you know what? I got to thinking about it. And it's really not worth the time. But these few people all seem to be serious. I mean, they're, at least from what I understand, they used to be pretty big in the Flat Earth community. And I wanted to know what you thought about this. Now, again, this is just your thoughts. So, Mr. Sergeant, I want to talk about Star God. We already talked about him last week, but he came out with a new video. Just basically, it sounded like he does have concerns about being the outcast because he's asking questions. And he takes great offense to how Miss Steers mocks him and talks about sitting on her hands. I don't know what video he's referring to, but I wanted to give him the attention because he seemed like he seems like a decent guy. When he talks to me, it's it's you know on a normal level. So, what is your take on that? He used to be a really nice guy. Uh, Star God's matter of fact, he, yeah. When, when the flatter thing was going last summer, he you know we we have never spoken directly, but we exchanged stuff through comments and. You know, he seemed to like me, and I seemed to like, you know, we, we seemed to be on the same page. And then once I was doing Patricia's show, uh, something happened. You know, he didn't like, I, I don't know why, again, you know, everyone's got their own take on it. Remember how I said it's kind of like Monty Python's uh, Life of Brian, where th there's so much enthusiasm in the Flat Earth movement that, that people want, everybody wants to see it done their own certain way. Uh, and... and he didn't like the way we were going with it, so he was attacking it. It was unfortunate because I, you know, we, we never had any bad words. It was sort of like Lawrence Wright and I. We, we never exchanged anything. He just started making videos against it and immediately said, well, he's got to be a government agent. We're turning it in a certain way. And so you know, we didn't poke fun at him. As far as I know, we, we just said, look, we're, we're, like, like you and I have said before, it's like there shouldn't be any fighting. Just get from point A to point Z you guys want to kill each other when you get to the end then fine go ahead uh, but i think when you get to point c and this thing finally cracks open uh that everyone will will have a different take a different perspective on life okay well i was gonna ask you what did you want to say to him in the end i mean if you could say something that's him, pretty much just kind of summed I, it up yeah that's pretty okay much the it, reason it, why it, i'm saying anything right now the reason why i'm bringing this up is uh because this is the last time i'm going to address negativity um, I, I, I wanted to give these people the benefit of the doubt because these are people you've all spoken highly of at one point, and I, and I, and I couldn't wrap my head around why they, why. I mean, other than the fact that they're doing it for attention, like a little kid when you take their ice cream cone. Yeah. You know. Um, okay, I want to talk about this Matt Powerland, Matt Boylan. He came out with a video called Flat Earth Ground Zero, and he does nothing but... Now, from what I understand, he's an actor, right? So the first thing I think of is, okay, he's acting. But, I, he's okay, when I saw I saw an interview with him and Patricia, and he was real happy, yeah. everything was great, and then all of a sudden, I hear all these negative things coming about him. And I'm, I do know, I'm not really big in this flat earth stuff. So, yeah. I mean, if it's hitting me, who else is it hitting, right? Yeah. So he expresses great anger in his video like he's really pissed off it almost seems like he's paranoid but i again i don't know the extent of how much his acting interferes with his reality you know did yeah. you ever see that did you see the ground zero video uh, maybe yeah, maybe I've not seen, I've seen, okay i've seen everything that he's done yeah tell me what you think He's he's the a very probably the most unique individual individual in the whole flat Earth movement because he was talking about flat Earth years ago. Uh, if you believe his story, and I do, although he will never tell it again for whatever reason, uh, when he was twenty five, uh, kind of in the midst of when he was doing the acting thing because he's an actor slash painter slash singer. He's a very creative guy. Uh, got a lot of camera presence. Uh, but when he was twenty five, NASA told him during a party that. Uh, the world was flat, and he didn't wait, get. Wait, 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 wait! Are you saying he spoke directly with NASA? He worked for NASA. He was a oh. subcontractor hired. He was a Canadian uh, graphic artist hired out of Montreal, straight out of college, 
And Are you telling you know, me this is what it looks like when one person finds out the truth, goes off the rocker, or what? Well, that's just it. There, There is, you know, when you have something like this, yeah, there is a neo effect or what I call sort of a instability ratio that that's potentially plus he's held it in longer than anybody else. It was rattling around his head for what going on 13 years now that, oh, wow. and, and he was trying to tell people years ago, but unfortunately as creative as he, as he is, he doesn't creative people don't really dumb down or create the, the, the dummies guide for anything. And so he kept trying to say it the same way. It's like photo or painting, photo or painting. And he said that a million times, and some people got it, but most people didn't. And so when I sort of translated, because you know, I'm the first one to admit that he was an inspiration for what I did, because I thought his message was a little fuzzy, but I did buy it along with, with other people. So when I translated it into something that was much more simple, he got, he contacted me like right off the bat. He contacted me even before the clues were finished, and uh, he was and he was he was saying, "Oh yeah, we should do something together." And he was thinking of moving out to Denver uh, when I was out in Denver last so year. So he's by no means basically a a just a troll or somebody nuts. No, somebody no. who's actually he has some meat behind him. Oh, absolutely. He is he, he's considered a legend in this thing because he's okay. He so actually, then. Okay, what I don't understand is why are these people attacking you and Patricia? Oh, they're not just Why are they? They're, they're I mean, attacking that's what people. It's... I mean, it's be, everyone sees what this thing could be. Matt was not shy in when he was doing a, this thing with Lori. No, he's not shy in that video Ground Zero either, but I, I, I just, my, he... I want to, I'm trying to wrap my head around why they're, so angry at you and Patricia, maybe not just you specifically, but I mean, your guys' names keep getting dropped. Well, because we're the, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be as humble as I can here. We're okay. right now the most high profile people that are doing this. Okay. And they don't, these two guys used to be, Matt used to be one of two guys that was really, if you want to talk about flat earth, you know, there were two guys and, and the first one was Matt. He was the, the first one that was really doing this. He didn't invent flat earth, of course, but he was, his story was more well known. And then Eric Dubé. And then, uh, you know, pe people want, they want the allies. So like, like Eric, for example, he wanted me to follow his model exactly. And when I said I wouldn't, you know, it's like, it's, you know, I don't need permission from him. He started attacking. Matt did the same thing, and I've got the emails to prove it, where he asked me to attack the Catholic Church. It, he goes, you've got to start building this into your interviews. And also, when people were calling me for interviews, they were asking me for Matt's contact info. And I was tell, I was asking him, I was going, look, these people want to interview you, you. What do I tell them? He goes, oh, I don't do interviews. I do this and that, like like he was above it. I was like, all right, fine, I'll do them then because they need to, they need answers, and so that's how it really came about. But those attacks never stopped because it, I didn't go away. Now, had I gone away, they would have you know, wouldn't have talked anymore. And, and once Patricia and I kind of joined forces, then that was going to you know that added another element to it. And so now he's you know playing catch up. And yeah, know so, okay, so. No, I don't mean to cut you off. I just I, I want to kind of keep it brief because we have a lot to get through. I, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Of course. The whole thing behind this is, uh, you know, okay, I have I get a lot of, because of what Humana Story stands for, mm -hmm. and everyone kind of sees us as a neutral party. They see us coming in and just kind of getting to know you and a few other people. Um, they come to us with the serious questions. And a lot of the concerns that I've been getting have mm -hmm. been, they, they come, they see this, they see the videos by these other people, mm -hmm. and then they get confused because they look to Star God for an answer, Yep. you know, and they look in his videos and then all that he sees is this high school teenage dramatic play being put on. Yep. And it, it literally pushes people away. And, and uh, so I I spend most of my time telling people, you know, I just ignore the negativity. And if you need to get in touch with anyone that I can get in touch with, which is basically you and Patricia, I say here, you know, you can you can message these people. You can talk to them. They'll talk to you back. I mean, they've never been rude or mean. They're professional. They, you know, yeah. I don't know 
I do not know, and I'd be the first one to admit it, I am not by any means an expert in this field. I just find it fascinating, right? And I've told you from time to time, it isn't going to disrupt my daily activity. So I just, you know, again, I just wanted to clear the air. And if you could say anything to these people as a whole right now, what would you say to them? <laughs> uh, stop Grow falling up. in. <clears throat> yeah, no, not even that. Stop falling into <laughs> the old the old power traps that have been going on for you know, since the dawn of time. And that is, uh, it's not like we're 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 asking for the spotlight we're just trying to get the message out if you want to get the message out get your message out but you're but every time that you spend uh uh hour you know whatever efforts you're putting against other people is just efforts that you're taking away from yourself because that's the thing i was thinking that's the exact same thing i was thinking i was thinking if everybody worked together you'd get a lot further yeah 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 so it didn't really really make any sense so i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna end this portion on one small statement for everyone to understand um well first off i'm gonna tell everybody who is doing this high school teenage crap matt powerland star god tim osmond it's time to grow up okay if matt boylan who went to nasa was a subcontractor obviously he's a smart guy if he believes in this stuff if he follows through with it you know what let go of the paranoia. Take a break. Figure something out. But quit being a little douchebag and whore. You know, if if Star God, quit your bitching. I mean, if you have serious answers, questions, whatever, throw them out there. But don't act like a kid and destroy who you are. You know, by saying something stupid like, that host is ugly or, or that... That Mark Sargent, he's a he's a crazy freak. Say something intelligent, you know, because all you're doing is mudslinging, and that's not going to get any further. You're not going to get anywhere. Okay, now that's all I'm going to say on that. <laughs> so uh, that's all that's right. that. Okay. Do I have um, time for a question? Or I gotta no, wait? not yet. Okay. Not yet. You just be quiet. No, I'm just I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm just kidding. What, what okay. is he like? The, he's like he's not the gimp in the corner, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm the, I'm the uh, slow old okay. man over here. Well, I just I wanted to clear the air and I wanted to see right. what you thought. And if you had to say something to these people, what would it be? So basically, all I'm saying, with all joking aside, is look, Star yeah, I God, got it. I got it. we respect you, Mount Powerland. We respect you, Tim Osmond. Yes, I know it's not your real name, and you're afraid of the world attacking you. We still care about you too. So if you guys have serious questions and you guys really want them answered, if you're trying to find serious answers to everything, simply post them. Be realistic. Hell, contact me. Again, guys, today's Flat Friday. So here's how this is going to work. Put your, you're going to have a link in the description below. Give me your best question, and I will contact you if it works. Because my goal is to make Mr. Sergeant say, Brian, you are right, just because I like that. So, um, we're going to move forward, and the next segment here is going to be the thoughts on Mr. Stephen Richards' video. I don't know if you've seen Seasons Explained on the Flat Earth, but Mr. Richards, or what I call yeah. you, Squeaky? I, I don't know. Um, go ahead and let's talk about your video there, buddy. <laughs> Which one? My recent one? The latest one? The, the one uh, that season? says Seasons yeah. Explained on Flat Earth? So yeah, and basically. I want Mark Sargent's opinion on this. Go ahead, buddy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, basically I just uh, kind of dumbed it down for everyone to make them understand what the uh, seasons are, how the uh, sun goes around the Tropic of Cancer causing our summer, then the equator causing winter, I mean causing spring slash autumn, and, um, and then around the Tropic of Capricorn to, uh, you know, make our winter, and then in the Southern Hemisphere that's their summer, and then, you know, it's all, it's all backwards in that way. And then at the end of the video I threw in a little, a... Uh, a little model of mine that I made up. I believe that we are under two domes, one physical, one non-physical, one magnetic slash gravitational. I'm not sure where to go there, but that's um that's pretty much my sum up of the of the video. I just did that video yesterday out of the blue. No notes, no no nothing, just kinda went with it. Being the pro that you are. Yeah, right. <laughs> the pro. <laughs> Um, well, in general, just I just want to get these videos out just one after another. 
as quick as possible just to help uh, reawake everyone to let them know that that there's other possibilities to where we we live and we have been lied to for the way that you pointed that out i thought was actually quite interesting it was kind of like a record on a record player the needle going in and out in and out that's kind of how it felt when i was i was watching you explain how that all went yes it's it's literally just like a record player it goes in and it goes out it just never stops mr richard that's what i just said i know (laughs) no i'm just i'm a repeater What are you okay, repeating so... yourself? You're being redundant. You're being, <laughs> yeah, re- that's a, that's you're being okay. repetitive. You're saying the same thing over and over. That sort of thing. Yeah. Over and yes. over again and the, again. Uh... Oh no! I I actually no. I'm I'm just sorry because you know I look at so many channels. Oh, I really like that one you did a week ago. Flat Earth and the Dome Theory. Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, I like that one. I know it hasn't gotten a whole lot of hits yet, but but it's got a perfect rating so far, which is which is great. Yeah, I dug this one. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, and Patricia commented on it, and Jaronism. Yeah, yeah, that one was that one was solid. So great, nice, nice one. I appreciate. I, it. I really appreciate yeah. your guys' work. You know, you guys. I, I I won't I won't concede defeat yet. I'm not going to say that uh, there is a flat <laughs> Earth yet, but uh, I don't think I'll ever be able to be in that position. But I do know that uh, secretly, maybe sort of, kind of, I think about it. I lose sleep over this. Thanks a lot, you jerk. Oh, that's oh, all right. That's There's a lot, a lot of people. <laughs> in fact, most people lose sleep over this. I was about to say, you've lost sleep over this. Good yeah. guy. I've lost I a get, lot. <laughs> I, get, yeah, I get emails every week from people that say, oh, yeah, because, well, you know, do, am I calling you Steven or am I calling you Squeaky? You call me Steve. <laughs> okay, okay. See, the, um, the, uh, you, you know as well as anybody yeah, that once you get into, like, the first couple hours, that's it. <laughs> oh, it's <laughs> done. That, that was me four years ago. It's been four years of just nonstop flat earth, literally. Oh wow! All right. Oh, oh yeah. I've got a. I've read all the books. I've read the Atlantean conspiracy, the flat Earth conspiracy. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen it all. Yeah, I've seen all of Matt right Boylan, Powerland, whatever the hell you want to call him, his videos. Yeah. He's credible. He's just gone crazy lately. I don't know what to think of all that, but that's just backtrack. Uh, again, it's, it's, yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, it's it is it is what it is. I, and, he was warned. I, I think a lot of Matt Powerland's stuff is artistic licensing, but now that you mentioned that you work for NASA, I honestly don't know what to think. He could very well have a reason to be paranoid. I mean, I'm not. Well, yeah, it's a government agency. Hey, NASA is is the Air Force, so you know. I yeah. Mean, what can you say? Yeah. Some people will say, "Oh, yeah, they're not the the Department of Defense. They're not a military operation." Absolutely, they're. In fact, they're uniquely military because they were founded not like any other armed force they they were founded on the on the glowing embers of uh, the nazi war machine so it's they they wouldn't even have existed without that so yeah anyway all right so hey mr uh mr emke there go ahead and uh go ahead and ask your question it's all you man okay i got one that might startle you uh how could they uh take the rocket going into space with the mm-hmm. space, space shuttle attached to it yeah. because the people on it? Yeah. How that's the question? Yeah, how could they fake how could they fake, you know, the rocket going into space with the oh, space that's easy. shuttle? Oh, easy, easy, easy. Because and have you ever seen uh I, I know you're not old enough to remember the nineteen seventy nine Capricorn One movie. I'm joking, but uh, they did just like Capricorn One, and and what I've said many times now is that no astronaut has ever been put on the top of any rocket ever. It's in fact that's the if you're going to fake a program like this, that's the last thing you're going to do is put a you know put people on the top of a big pile of liquid explosives and and set a match to it uh, because there's something that's going to go wrong eventually. And the 1986 Challenger disaster was the perfect perfect example of that, where. The Challenger rocket actually did blow up, and I don't even know if it was meant to blow up, if they were trying to stall the program deliberately, or it actually just, you know, there was a mechanical failure. But the astronauts were down on the ground, and if anyone has any doubt of that, look up, real simple in any search engine, Challenger astronauts still alive. Six out of the seven astronauts, they found them. You know, you couldn't have done this without the internet and social media, and they're out there. Is there a correlation between the Challenger issue, how you said six out of seven are still alive, and the yeah. and the Sandy Hook children? That's a little different. 
That's a little different. But it's Sandy about Hook the thing, same principle. Same principle. Well, Sandy Hook was even more basic. Well, no, no. I, I know there's more details involved in Sandy Hook, and I didn't want to get involved in it. I was just curious but, if there was a court. Well, no, 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 no. But super they... quick, though, if, if anyone doubts anything about the Sandy Hook, because I'm you know conspiracy guy. Uh, the, I think Max Malone was the one that was offering it, uh, but he was offering like $1,000 to anyone that could show even a five-second clip, even a five-second video of any child being carried out of that school by a law enforcement member or anything. There was there was never video. There was like three still shots. It was really similar to the Earth thing. There were like three still shots of any children, and they were in a parking lot, and they were obviously were not shot that morning. Uh, but that was the problem with that whole operation where the, all the news helicopters got there. They said, oh, yeah, the children are still in the school. Nobody ever came out, and that was it. Then they eventually cut to commercial hours later, and we never we never did see them. So anyway, sorry, I digress. Hey, what, other, what other questions did you have, Mark? Okay, um, we got another one here. What about the satellites, our satellites in space? Are they fake as well? Yeah, yeah, they are. And I, what I've been trying to come up with, come back with people to people lately has been this one which is who told you there were satellites in the first place uh, the same people that told you that the united states went to the moon and planted a flag because i've gone out and i can only say this from personal experience i've gone out with night vision binoculars for the last five six years now and you yeah, you you look up there and you see a lot of things buzzing around but they aren't satellites. I don't know exactly who put them up there, but they're not us because they're exhibiting uh, movement that I've never seen before in aircraft. Uh, ballistic motions, you know, I've never seen a, a satellite make a, a sharp left hand or right hand turn or, you know, all of a sudden power up and, and go ballistic or, or start flying in formation with other satellites. So, no. No, I don't think there's satellites up there at all. And the I used to say it's because the ISS hoax, interior videos. It's like, okay, if you're face, faking the interior of the ISS, then how can I trust satellites? But now it's much more simple than that. It's like, who? wait, who told you there were satellites? The same, it's, it's, it always circles back to the same group, the space organizations. They're the, the ultimate gatekeepers. They're the ones that tell you that there's everything. Oh, yeah, by the way, here's, here's a picture of Saturn and Mars. Okay. Um, and and the sun, it it all comes back to the same people. They're the only people that have access to this stuff. And can you trust them? And well, they're a military organization in the United States government. It's not like you, the U.S. government would lie about anything, right? So, there you go. <laughs> well, what else you got? What about uh, what about our cell phones? Don't they have something to do with the satellites in space? I, I used to think so as well. I, until I started looking into the GPS system, global positioning system, also designed by the United States Department of Defense, uh, came online in the mid '90s. Uh, if, if this, yeah, the cell phones are running off something, but I think they're running off the same thing that's projecting ev- just about everything, every transmission that's going through the air, and that is an enhanced version of the uh, Loran system, the old Loran system, which we've had around for decades, and that is. There are no, yes, yeah, so like the, but I'll, let me refer back to the GPS system. The GPS system, I used to say it's 24 satellites, but somebody corrected me yesterday, and supposedly it's 36 satellites that are orbiting the Earth, and yet they don't track the large, the three largest oceans in the Southern Hemisphere, and it's a military organization. Uh, there, there, there's massive dead spots all over the place, not just not just in the oceans, but also locally. You get these weird things, like in the middle of the United States, I had the, the flight instructor that said, Oh, yeah, by the way, GPS just drops off for like in 24-hour 24, 24 periods in parts of Iowa uh, for no no apparent reason. There's no coverage, even though, you know, the U.S. government doesn't do anything small. So, no, the, the cell phones are running off a ground-based system. Oh, okay. Um, uh, okay, what? why did they take the uh, space program and, sp- space program to begin with? Well, oh, why even build it? Uh, I'm going to steal from, from Matt Boylan on this one uh, because he, he actually put it quite elegantly, which was you have to eventually. It was In fact, that, that was um, a big mystery for me, which was the not, not if they uh, faked like the moon missions. Why would you fake the moon missions? Why would you spend that much money? Because we all know the rockets were real. You know, you, and a lot of people were employed and you spent a lot of money. Why would you do it? And it's because you had to. Um, sooner or later, and, and everyone knew this, especially in the science field, there was going to be a lot of pressure, which was 
sooner or later, someone's got to take a picture of the Earth. That's the ultimate shot, because we've all been passing around the globes for centuries. So somebody has to take a picture of the Earth, but you can't take a picture of the Earth. You you can't just hand people a picture. You can't just walk up to them with an 8x10 glossy or 8x11 glossy and say, oh, yeah, here's a picture of the Earth, because the first question is, oh, how'd you take it? So you actually have to create, it's, it sounds ridiculous, but it's, it works. And that is, you have to create at least the illusion of a program that could get high enough to take the picture. That way, say, oh yeah, well remember that rocket we sent up? That's who took the picture. But they made the mistake in that they were so nervous about screwing that whole thing up, they only took one picture. And then that was the picture they milked uh, for 43 years. And they and they waited all the way until the last mission. I mean, they dragged their feet on taking that picture because Apollo 8 didn't take it. So that, Apollo 8, people think, oh, Apollo 11, that went to the moon, landed. No, Apollo 8 supposedly went to the moon and 10 and 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. They all went. No pictures were taken. 17 went. And then literally on the way back, it's like, oh, okay, well, since it's our last mission, better take a shot. And then that was the only picture they put in textbooks all the way up until, coincidentally enough, the middle of last year, 2015. And it's incredible. You know, they, they got away with it for that long, but uh, the Internet hive mind, you know, figured it out. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, by the way, to create the space program, not only do you have to take the picture, but you control the access to space. You don't. You you do not want private companies going up there and doing stuff. And they be they held that off for as long as they could. And now, finally, SpaceX and Virgin Galactic are getting involved. And I'm sure at the highest levels there. Do, do you remember me showing you that I showed you a video clip from a uh, movie or a, from a from a private company, Blue Oyster? I think it was. I'd have to look at the video again. But yeah. basically, they shoot the rocket into space. You watch it shoot into space, yeah. and now. It, you see the rocket, you see the trail, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it goes to the ground crew. You hear people talking, like the space mission stuff, and then it goes into CGI graphics. Yeah, yeah, and that's, I, and that's. I was like, God damn it! <laughs> yep, that's standard operating procedures. In fact, Max Malone just made a great. I don't know if you caught that one, Stephen. Max Malone made a great video just just last week, where again he catches. He's really good at catching the things that aren't there where he said, yeah, he goes, just so everyone knows, there's never, there's not only is there no footage of astronauts doing, you know, doing a pan, but there's no footage of any rocket actually going out into space or re-entering from space. Okay, you know, well, yeah. Uh, here's you, the question that I have on, on that Blue Oyster video, and you ha- we have about a minute and 30 seconds left. So why would they spend that much money, that much time, a private company, to shoot a rocket into near Earth space orbit or whatever, why would they shoot something like that into space and then use a filler with nothing but CGI graphics? And then I, I don't, I, I don't understand what their logic is. Because they, they're in, in, they're infiltrated at the highest levels. Uh, when a rocket reaches a certain point, NASA takes over telemetry. They take over bro- the broadcast. And by that, I mean the, the, the organization that NASA built, which was the ATS, the um, Aeronautical and Transportation Safety Bureau. They, they're the ones that take it over. They can't show it. So they do whatever they can, and people buy the illusion. And we have for six decades. Uh, but that, that illusion is starting to break down. Okay. So uh, go ahead, Mark. Do you have any other questions there? Mr. Yeah. Uh, okay, here's a good one for you. What do you mean when you refer to the flat earth spray? Okay, save that for one second. We're going to come back from the break, and then we'll we'll do it again. Uh, Listen, guys, today is Flat Friday. If you guys have a question or a comment that's good, leave it in the comment section of Humana Stories, episode number 40, Coffee with Humana Story. If you want to, you can also send it in using our contact link that Mark Sargent will put up. And we will be back shortly, guys. Humana's story is the story of humanity, one person at a time. We believe each person has a story to tell, and each story shapes that person into who they are today. Collectively, and more importantly, each and every person's story shapes this little blue rock we call home. We are all together whether we like it or not. We also believe that your unique story might just help someone else traveling down your pathway in life. You might be their guide through this rough time. 
We are always looking for more exciting stories to share with the world. If you've got one, come share it with us today. to Coffee with Your Man of Story, episode number 40. Uh, this is Flat Friday. For anyone who wants to uh, participate in this, all I'm asking is a thumbs up on this, uh, any one of the channels that you see this uh, video up on. And uh, write an intellig intelligent question um, regarding this episode and what the responses are that you're hearing. Um, what else I'd like to see is if you want you can go ahead and use our link in mark Sargent's description that will link you to our contact page where you will ask us the question because we will ask him next friday and so we're looking for the question to stump mark Sargent in a way that is written for him to understand i need to make that clear too um i've got mark emke who was asking about Flat Earth Spray. Go ahead and ask the question again. We went to break, so we have to... You're not... Uh, Mark, Mark, we love you. You're old, but you also don't have it unmuted. Wait a minute. <laughs> there we go. Sorry. Okay, uh, <laughs> I'm a little slow mistake. here. I hate to see it. <laughs> okay. It happens. Uh, <laughs> yeah. What do you mean when you refer to the Flat Earth Spray? Flat Earth Spray was not a phrase that I coined. It was originally created by Star Gods, which was a, a great little analogy, which was... Uh, if you can imagine, it's a lot of people say they're open-minded. Conspiracy people love saying, oh, yeah, I'm open-minded. I'm open-minded about everything. And there was goes, nothing oh, yeah. open-minded about their, those guys' videos. Well, the, be, like, so, like, people will believe in, like, no, aliens. don't stutter on your words. There was nothing open-minded about the way they were thinking when they were writing what they wrote. An open-minded person is, does not act hostile in any way. Uh, okay, but we're, we're not still talking about this, right? I know, I just, I, well, you said open-minded. No, okay, yeah, all right, it. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It's all right. I do it's apologize. Okay. I it's did okay. the same thing that they're doing. My bad. That's okay. I promise so, I won't do it again. If you were open-minded, he his his thought was, imagine that uh, uh, Flat Earth was, you know, some sort of, I don't know, you know breath spray or a, a mace or whatever. And, and so you spray that on someone. It's like, fine, you think you're open-minded? Here, try this. <laughs> And you get hit in the face with, with, with Flat Earth and see how you respond. Are you still open-minded? Because Flat Earth, people respond to that much, much differently than they do with just about anything else, including you know, lizard people and child abductions and ritual killings and you, you name it. Flat Earth is very, very unique because it, it, it elicits a response that is really shocking to a lot of people. That why, why would everyone get so upset about something that should be the dumbest and simplest thing you could just walk away from? And so, yeah, that's what that's what Flat Earth Spray is. Flat Earth is just the concept of Flat Earth getting hit in your face and to prove, to, to show people how open-minded you really are. And it's and get everyone relaxed the same way. Actually, you should treat it no different than the uh, the military does. I don't know if they do it up in Canada. But the uh, the place where... Uh, they, they take you, they take the army, they take you into like a tear gas room and then they have you take off your mask and you have to breathe in the tear gas and nobody walks out of there without, you know, crying. It's, that's just the, the whole point. That's really what Flat Earth is. You know, everyone gets hit with it the same way. Everyone reacts and, you know, they just have to, to deal with it eventually. So, next question. Okay. Um, okay, I got one that's kind of off from there. Uh, yeah. Why do people have to belittle oh, I, others? I, I, you're, I know what you're going to ask, Mark, so Mark, 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 Mark. Um, yeah, we're not. We don't want to bash the other people. I know what you're, you were. You were going to ask why are they all hostile and why do they get upset? You know, why are they belittling each other? But that's that's what that's that's the core of what I was saying at the beginning is why can't they just get along and actually do it? I mean, they, the trolls on the site are literally just again they do I, it I, because. Well, you don't have to explain it. He uh, no 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 no. He got let, me, uh, the, let me let me do it in ten seconds to him. Ready. And that is a, a, a very wise but young woman recently said, haters going to hate, 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 hate. There you go. 
That's <laughs> fine. Hold on, air. Wait, hold I on. I'll give you an applause for that. That's a, that's a Taylor Swift reference in case everyone got that. I got it. Okay. Okay, so Richard. Richards. Mr. Stephen Richards. Hey, Squeaky. Is it my turn? Yeah, give your question. All right, so. Mark, this is just a yes or no question. The first one, right off that. Um, sure. You think they? You think they found the dome, Admiral Byrd, back in '56 uh, on his last expedition? They, yes. You think he found the dome? Yes. yes. No, I'm just I'm yes. kidding. I'm kidding. All right. Yes. So you think that? So if Byrd found the dome, it took 25 to 30 years to find this. Well, 28 actually. But um, yeah. Do you think if if you place a uh, okay, if you place a half dollar down on a table? And you put the bowl upside down. Do you think that's a uh, like a big salad bowl? Is that an accurate representation of where we live? And that also goes upon the uh, the nuclear rocket testing back in the 60s and 50s. Uh, the the you know 100 to 300 kilometer kilometers up. Yeah. And they were just testing that. So you think that's like a semi accurate representation of where we live? Ah, uh, it's the one I like. Yeah. Okay. With that being said, do you think that the uh, um, like I was saying in my video, I don't know if you saw the last part of my video, but I believe in two separate domes, like the one actual physical dome that keeps us in, yeah. and then a, and then a, uh, like a, I don't know how to explain it, like a gravitational, magnetic, invisible dome that probably goes about, I don't know, maybe a hundred, uh, I'd probably say like 10, 20 miles above where the sun is supposedly. Okay. And then after you go from there, that could be the point of, do you think that would be the point of where you could probably do like a high altitude or a low quote unquote atmospheric, you know, like a uh, NASA video. Oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. Possible. Yeah. And people, people have suggested that, but the, the thing is the the thing that bothered me about that, because yeah, I, I heard that, you know, fairly, fairly early on. But the thing that bothered me that about that was the ISS. You might be able to do something if there was a gravitational anomaly up there, if you got up high enough. Uh, but they're, let's put it this way. It's, they're faking so much up there. Why do any of it if you don't have to? I think maybe the only thing they got up there, even if, even if you were going to repeat signals, you know, to try to simulate satellites, uh, you could do that with a combination of modified AWAC planes, spy planes, or, uh, you know, maybe the simplest of all, and that is bounce the, the signal off of the, the structure itself. If you could figure that out, uh, depending on how it resonates, but yeah, yeah, it, it's it's possible. Sure, why not? I mean, it's the model you're going with. I'm not going to discount it. Like I'm saying, when if if there's a there's a part of this model that is not you know that doesn't jibe with what I've been pushing, that I'm not going to lose any sleep. I'm not going to curl up in a fetal position with a bottle later and say I was wrong. No, <laughs> I, will not, I will not do that. So. Yeah, because one thing I started looking into about a week ago was like the whole magnetics thing, and that really that really caught my eye. Um, yeah. you, you obviously know. Have you watched the Globebusters show before? Yeah, yeah. You're you're familiar with Bob, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, he's the one that I was just watching a couple old ones the other day, and they got into all the magnetics, and that really that really caught my eye. Yeah. I was like, huh, that's actually pretty possible. Like, that's one thing that everyone can account for is like that magnets actually work. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, I dig it. I dig it. All right, so another question here. Da, da, da. Um, all right, so obviously you believe there's a dome. You believe there's a intelligent something that put us here, right? Oh, intelligent design. Yeah, yeah. It's just now a question of you know, are we are we going down the religious path or are we going to go down an advanced technology path? Because it's got it's one or the other. All right. So with that being said, what do you what do you think the the one who created this intelligent design may look like. I have a little guess, but I would like to hear your uh, your little theory on that. Well, I think you, you get asked that question by everybody. How no, no, not not what they not it? what they look like though, uh, because if we're talking about physical characteristics, you know, could this be the the Anunnaki reference which we've heard about so often, where you're you're not supposed to even draw, you're not even supposed to to, to render what their faces look like which is why really? they put bird heads on on the top of a lot of them yeah that was like one of the instructions with the Anunnaki if you look at it it's like you're not supposed to show what they what they look like only that they're big you know they're they're much much bigger than us but they do look like us I, I don't think the uh, religious texts were wrong in that aspect and that is we were made in their image uh, so yeah 
I, I think they're humanoid looking, uh, but I, I do think they're probably much larger. I'm not going to go off, you know, try to figure out what the color of their skin is. Not that it matters oh, because, no, no. Yeah. but, um, but yeah, I, I think they're humanoid. I don't think, uh, some people say, well, no, they're lizard people or they're bird people or whatever. It's like, yeah, maybe, but I still think they have two arms, two legs, and a head. Absolutely. It- I th- I think they have three eyes instead of two, just on the fact that, like, you know, everyone says humans have their mind's eye. When you close your eye, you can still, like, see stuff from your mind. And I think that's, like, our last connection to them, like, like not physically, but mentally. And we can, like, connect to their it's – all, it's all one theory that they have three eyes, but that's just my intake on it. Yeah. Right on. Right on. I like that. That's cool. Yep, definitely. I mean, I'm always interested in hearing other people's perspective, but the eye thing reminds me of how you're, you know, in psychology, you have to go through a little bit of medical, you know, you got to understand a little medical procedure. And one of the things that we study is uh, how the eye perceives light and how it sends a signal to the brain. Your brain's in complete darkness. So... How does it know? Let's say you're sipping a cup of coffee. How does it know what that cup looks like? Hmm. I mean, your eye just sends a signal. So it, it interprets that signal, and that's what your muscle memory in your brain, that's how it comes out. So it's, yeah, it, it's interesting, and we know very little about the human body, considering how much we're supposed to know. I've always no, but, but we went to space, kind of right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we went to space. All right. all right, so on this on this thought, since uh, we're running out of time, I'm going to go ahead and ask you a few questions. We'll just pick them up later on, on the next episode. Okay. Um, so thoughts on Coffee with Humana Story, episode 39, Flat Earth, or Flat Friday, number two. Astronauts gone wild. Oh, did astronauts you do any gone work, wild. Uh, did you do any work on Bart Sebro? I mean, like, who is this man? What makes you believe he is an uh, he's authentic himself? I mean, what um, made you think, gee, let's follow this guy? Oh, I didn't necessarily follow him. It was just that he made. I think he lucked out. I think he stumbled across something with the uh, uh, astronauts got wild. I do not know how he re- acquired that tape that was supposedly sent from NASA. But and I the and tape I you're be- speaking of is the low Earth orbit tape. Low Earth orbit tape that was simulating the Earth from a distance, which in in in, in an in itself is damning to NASA. I mean, it absolutely shows that NASA fake stuff. But I think it was clever. I think it, I thought it was too blatant to, to where now, when I look at it from flat Earth point of view, I think even the faking of it was fake. Meaning the uh, the simulation of low oh, low Earth orbit, I don't think was was even done by these guys. I think that it was just it was a fallback position on their part to at least create low Earth orbit just in case. You know, it's just so that they, they could fall back from this slowly. I am reminded when you're talking about this, about uh, the Majestic 12 in the Alien documentation. Um, The MJ-12 documents were handed by a gentleman named Falcon on a TV show, (laughs) right? And they openly said, well, this guy gave it to us and he hit his face. You know the whole, you know the drill. And as you're talking about this, I'm envisioning that. It's almost like it's a repeat yeah, yeah, thing see, like they like to look the and i'm not the i'm not conspiracy levels, i'm just saying it's 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 a little coincidental that that's yeah. what i see governments can keep secrets make no mistake you know they have before uh anyone has any doubt look at the sr-71 spy plane it went literally from inception to retirement and then only when they retired it back in the okay. freaking 80s did they did they say oh yeah by the way retiring the spy plane and people are going what what spy plane and, and oh yeah by the way we've had this one even though you know and then i love the, the follow-up to that it's like oh wow what are you going to replace it with and they said oh nothing okay <laughs> so in, in in reference to the low earth orbit tape why do you feel this aspect of the action committed by Sebro doesn't really matter um you had mentioned during when every time you talk about him you, you go into detail about the that specific incident with the tape and yeah Sebro. Um, by this action, I refer to who gets his tape. Um, you said that he had gotten it from a friend or or, or someone he knew gave it to him, and, and my well, thing I think is, it was, I think it was just the mail who is him. important. 
Yeah, I know. I think it was just mailed to him. I don't know. I don't think, even know if he he's, has said exactly where, you know, did it show up on his desk in a package, you know, or one of those things. But there was no reason to give him that tape. Like, if you're going to give it to anybody, why give it to that guy? There's, okay. And there's, this, this was on your Flat Earth Clues video number 11, right? Yeah, but I just mentioned that the... I actually didn't really mention the the... What I really cared about was, yeah, from the Earth to the Moon, I did mention, but it was really astronauts gone wild that was that was more interesting because, again, he talked about, you know, while he was trying to trip them up on questions, he inadvertently came up with the whole Bible scenario, which is, oh yeah, put your hand in the Bible and swear. Probably didn't think much of it. It was just a prop to him, and then the reaction that he got that was the most surprising thing to me. Okay, so more on Admiral Byrd. Um, I wanted yep. to clarify a few things in 1926. The flight of uh, uh, Mr. Bird. Uh, he, can you explain it deeper? You don't really talk about the 1926 flight. You talk about the other one he did deep freeze. Uh, but, but... Yeah, the 1926 flight where he took a, a, a plane to the North Pole. Uh, you know, the, the first person to actually take a, a plane to the North Pole. And the reason why I kind of glossed over it was is because it was one. It was the North Pole, and it, I don't think it had much to do with with this. I mean, yeah, in hindsight, it probably should have spent a little more time on it. But it was everyone's. That's how what he's really known for is the Hollow Earth theory, and that he supposedly in 1926 entered an opening in the North Pole and found uh, an ancient civilization and you know, a big big journey to the center of the Earth type scenario. And that's what he did in 1926. And you would have thought that supposedly, again, was leaked through his secret diary. And that could have even been a cover story to keep people focused on the North Pole. I don't know. Uh, but what we do know is that literally after that, even though you would have thought he would have spent a lot more time up there, he spent the rest of his remaining life, 1928 till his death in 1957, looking for something at the South Pole. So if it was really that great at the North Pole, you would have thought that no matter how much money people threw at him, he would have just kept going back to the North Pole. But no, something kept pointing him back to the South. So fascinating guy, fascinating stories from back Okay, then. so uh, just out of curiosity, why not make a video dedicated to just him and this whole spiel? Well, I mean, I know you do a little bit in your videos, and the Flat Earth Clues 1 through 12 are awesome. Yeah. But why not... Why not make something a little deeper? Because I've noticed one thing from pretty much everyone who's contacted me mm -hmm. about this whole subject is they all ask questions about bird. I, no, part of the reason why I didn't spend too much time on anything is because I was trying to stimulate people's abilities to, to look for themselves. It's one thing, you know, I can I can preach and stand on a soapbox and do all I want. Yeah, but, but I mean what I mean what I'm saying is why not make a video video dedicated to just him, like one ten minute clip of explaining him. Well, the reason I ask this this is why I'm asking it. Because yeah. I sit back and I look at Admiral Byrd and the first word that pops out is Admiral, which tells me he's in the Navy, which tells me he's working for the government. Which tells me that he could be lying. Sure, he could be, and several people have said that. But I did my the clue. The second clue I did was called the Bird Wall, and it did cover a lot about. I mean, yeah, it wasn't that long, but it spent. It was pretty much all him. Uh, Would you but be I was willing to do what? To make, make a, another to make a video on who Bird is. Mm. See, I okay. As you see, whenever I do an interview, I, mm. I I encompass who you were because I think that has a lot to do with who you are. And, and mm -hmm. in this case, we're referencing him and everybody, I mean, everybody, I'm not kidding you. The emails that I get are insane about Admiral Byrd. It's like I, they, they just, they are unanswered questions. Well, yeah, that's, that's good. But the, I, there's no reason for me to do it because all the information's out there. Yeah, there's tons of, which is why I end every single clue with do your own research and ask questions. And for anyone that wants to do more, it's honestly the, the thing that, that, that Byrd, the, the most important thing about Bird for me was that 1954 television interview, which is why I put an edited version. And, and you know me, I don't generally put videos at the end of, you know, put videos in my clues. But I did in his case because I thought it was so important. I thought that spoke more volumes than, than anything else uh, about what he was. At least you get kind of a look into him. But no, no, I'm not going to make a, a specific video just on him because everyone else, that's why I'm hoping other people will do. And some have. 
and some haven't, but uh, but I think my, my summary was a was a pretty good intro introduction to him. Oh well, no, yeah. Are you kidding? <laughs> so I mean, I yeah, it got me involved in this whole thing, and I'm, you know, you know me, I'm a pretty cool, yeah. cucumber sort of guy. I yeah. okay, so <clears throat> it's funny that you mentioned 1954 because you mentioned in 1955 you expressed that uh, the world got very weird, quote unquote, your own words. Yep. Yeah. Concluding the operation of deep freeze. What mm -hmm. began the weird? Oh, the what everyone did after that. The the fact that all the nations got that were down in Antarctica left unilaterally. And and there were 10, 12 nations that were down there at that time. Uh, not to mention the Soviet Union and the United States ramping up their rocket program like like their lives depended on it. And then Shortly after that, I mean, less than a year after ramping up the rocket program, putting atomic weapons on the top of them and firing them at the sky for four years. And then during that process from 1958 to 1962, they Are you formed... talking about the thermal nuclear weapons that we were shooting? Yeah. That Russian... Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can look it up on, on oh, good God. Wikipedia. No, you don't have to look it up. The Tsar bomb is just a good example. I well, no, but that wasn't high altitude. Uh, the Tsar bomb was a was a air to air to yeah a drop yeah. bomb, but for four years yeah firing those rockets up you know consistently you know for you know at different altitudes like they were painting the sky looking for something or trying to blow a hole in it. Uh, NASA's formed almost immediately after those shots are started in 1958. In 1959, the Van Allen Belt is is announced by NASA again same group. Uh, the Antarctic Treaty, 1959, same year, which locks down Antarctica for all time so that nobody can ever go down there, no matter what country you are or how powerful you are or how rich you are. Uh, it just, yeah, that, that was the beginning of all the weirdness that, that shaped what we are now. Uh, everything we are now, everything that's been happening is really just extensions of those moves that were made in the late 1950s, early 1960s. And then, you know, the space program just expanded and uh, continued the lie because unfortunately once you start that lie you can never officially quit it even though they've been trying to recently with shutting down the space program and delaying the Mars ro program and, um, they did do that didn't they? They tried to shut down the space program and only allowed our astronauts to go into space using Russia Well yeah I mean the, the space oh, shuttle Russia and China I think China has its own space station right? oh, there's, there's a bunch of company or countries out there that have their own space programs but they're all blueprinted off NASA they all don't do anything. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, they've figured okay. out. So, anyway. Okay, so uh, I wanted to talk about the treaty, um, the Antarctica Treaty. At some point, I, I wanted to get a full understanding of the Antarctica Treaty, but I also wanted to talk about there was another treaty, uh, some environmental treaty that you keep referencing, but we don't know too much about. Um I yeah we don't have time today, I, but I yeah I'd like to try to um, understand the treaty in full. I don't know if you've actually gone through it, but I don't think like you said several times the government mm -hmm. doesn't make mistakes, which means they're specific in their wording. And if you know everyone talks about Illuminati and the Masonic symbols, et cetera, et cetera, then it would all be in wording, right? So maybe we we should try that. I want to try to go through that next episode. Um, okay. So listen, uh, I want to thank you guys for being on the show. Thanks, thanks again. for having me. Yeah, no, thanks. Thanks very much. Yeah, thanks for being on the, be on the show. Humana Story thanks you for listening and your activity within our community.